Welcome to Florida Lacrosse Journey to the Top. I'm Charity Hitt. When we last saw the Gators, they were wrapping up a preseason win against England and were preparing to hit the road to take on the University of North Carolina, a team they've never beaten before. Will this be the year the Gators finally take down the Tar Heels? We'll find out next on Florida Lacrosse Journey to the Top. After defeating England in exhibition play, the third-ranked Florida Gators began their 2013 regular season on the right track, taking down fifth-ranked North Carolina on the road. Things got off to a slow start for the Orange and Blue as the Tar Heels scored three unanswered goals within the first eight minutes of the match. Goal this time, and it is a three to nothing game. Fortunately for the Gators, Kitty Cullen was able to put her team on the board with their only goal of the first half as Florida went into halftime, trailing UNC three to one. Yeah, well, at halftime, I mean, we only had one goal, so we just knew we had to stay composed and just take it one goal at a time. and. We knew the draw was really important to hold possession and, you know, to take it one goal at a time, and I think we did really well. After a shaky start in the first half, the orange and blue came out hot in the second. Senior Brittany DeShield got the Gators back on track as she scored the first goal of the second half. Senior Ashley Bruns tied it up for Florida as she put one in the back of the net with less than 20 minutes left in the match. And a goal from Florida as they wrap around the back of the net. Soon after, the Gators took the lead as Gobby Wiegand scored the go-ahead goal less than a minute after Bruns. With Florida's offense finally producing, the defense followed suit as the orange and blue held the Tar Heels scoreless in the second half. Gobby Wiegand sealed the deal with her second goal, putting the Gators up 5-3 for the win. With an outstanding defensive performance, the Gators held UNC scoreless for a total of 43 minutes of the 60-minute match. The victory over North Carolina marks the first time Florida has come back to win after trailing at halftime. Um, that was definitely huge for us. I mean, especially us seniors, we didn't want to graduate with, ever, with not ever getting a win against Carolina. So I think for us, you know, that was something really nice that we were able to, you know, go through our senior season with, and it's just a huge win. I thought the seniors stepped up really well in that game. Um, I thought they took over um, the leadership aspect, which we certainly needed to accomplish um, because it was a tight game. We were down by a couple goals. Uh, I thought they stepped up, played really well, um, persevered, and never gave up. So just a great effort by that whole crew. Florida's road trip would continue as they traveled to Jacksonville to take on the Dolphins of Jacksonville University. The Dolphins got on the board first, but Florida countered with four goals of their own, two by Kitty Cullen and a goal apiece by Brittany DeShiel and Gobby Wiegand. That gave the Orange and Blue a 4-1 to one lead. The Gators would keep the offensive pressure on the Dolphins, and by the end of the first half, Florida held a comfortable 9-3 advantage. The defender shoots and scores. Gabby Wiegand, as she was falling to the ground, gets the goal, and the Gators lead 9-3. In the second half, Florida's defense tightened as the Gators limited the Dolphins to just one goal. Coming off ALC Player of the Week honors for her role in the UNC victory, goalie Mikey Mahar would record six saves on the night. Gabby Wiegand found the back of the net twice in the second half to give her five goals as Florida went on to a 15-4 victory. Gabby Wiegand, one more time. The Orange and Blues road trip pressed on as they traveled to North Carolina where they defeated High Point 13-7. Coming off their victories on the road, the Gators would return to Donald R. Disney Stadium for yet another win in their 2013 home opener against Stony Brook. The Gators then went on to defeat UC Davis 16-4 and made quick work of Albany with an impressive 17-7 victory. While the team was excited to be back at home, their biggest fans might have been even more excited. Uh, uh. I mean, those guys are awesome. Yeah, okay. Meet Adam, 
Seth, Larry, Kyle, and Josh. This is Kitty's Corner. Kitty's Corner is fantastic. Sweet Caroline! Ba, ba, ba. They do our warm-ups with us, which is really cool to see, you know. It, kind of helps like think that they're playing in this game as well and like you look to them when you need like to get pumped up. Orange! They're definitely our number one fans. Let's go number five, Mikey Mahar! They're great. I Kitty's Corner, they're huge fans. Um, they really get us going, you know, when we get in a wall, you just kind of look to them and they're an extension of our support as well. Nine minutes. 39 minutes for the rest of our life. All right. But as fanatic as these fans have become, it's how they began that is most humbling. We, uh, we came out last year to the English National game. Um, that was the first game of the year for them. Last year they just showed up. So we just had a fun time and decided to keep coming back. I think it was just you know the opportunity that we had that we saw to uh, just really make an impact. And they're there before we even walk on the field. So. Walking out, we see their wigs and their body paint, and that's really awesome and really supportive for us. After like a couple games, my dad went over and talked to them and said, hey, you guys should come over to our tailgate after the game because we always have food with our parents, and they came by, and they're all just such great, nice guys, um, and you know, now we're all really good friends with them. Wait, wait, JC. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> oh, guys. You guys got that better than the original. <laughs> and it's amazing, I think, you know, it's unlike probably any other girls lacrosse team get, doesn't get fans like that. The passion from Kitty's Corner has drawn a following among many Florida lacrosse fans. Whether it's passing out t-shirts or posing for pictures, they take the time to spread their boundless energy with future and former Gators alike. Thank you. I think they're the best fans in all of women's lacrosse, honestly. I said it's great to be a Florida kid. I said it's great to be a Florida kid. I said it's great to be a Florida kid. I said it's great to be a Florida kid. I said it's great. Home and away, the members of Kitty's Corner make it their mission to not only attend every home game, but also make the trek across the country to show support for the team they love. Some of the road trips we went on, we went on UNC this year, and we went to Jacksonville. Um, UNC was a great time, <laughs> a lot of good memories, driving all through the night, <laughs> karaoke in the car. We enjoyed it. The, the players. We surprised them. We, we hope we surprised them at UNC. They came to North Carolina, which was just such a surprise to us, and they're just such great fans and are so supportive, and we really, really enjoy having them. They kind of said that they were coming, but we weren't sure, and then when we saw them, like, it just pumped us up even more, and just, like, knowing that they were there, it just, it, like, boosted our confidence so much more. They just show so much heart for us, and it's just a really good feeling to know that you will always have those fans there to back you, no matter how good or bad your team's doing. The next stop for the Gators and Kitty's Corner, Miami, where the orange and blue will face off against Syracuse, a team that Florida has seen before. This matchup has quickly become one of the best in the country. It is. It's, I mean, it's turned out to be quite a rivalry, which is exciting um, because, you know, you, you want to have those rivalries throughout your, uh, throughout your career. And so I think that's one that we've established. And, you know, they got the better of us last year. And so, you know, I think it's important to, you know, get off to a strong start because that's a team that can go off of momentum as we saw last year. So, you know, it's important for us to get off to a, a strong start. It's going to be an exciting game, but we're taking it just as any other game this season. It'll be a great competition. Syracuse is a great team, and we're just ready to go out there and give them the best that we got. After a strong start to their season, the Gators are now ranked second in the country and will head to South Florida for a tough matchup against fourth-ranked Syracuse. We'll have all the action for Miami and more next time as your Florida lacrosse journey to the top continues.